them a fire by turning on the scene And I got the Marines, you're about to get clean The air no further, that's your base on the screen Ain't no messing around when it's the kind of still rain Hello everyone, welcome to Division A Week 8 cast. This will be the English cast and we're going to start off with Germany against the European team. First match, Barker U against Quark. Let's go right into that. In the top left spawn, as the Magenta Protoss, we have Ash Quark representing Team NEU. And in the bottom right, we have the Blue Zerg, Bakuryu, representing Team Germany. Let's see. Alright, looks like these are the best colors we have. Map is Fighting Spirit, PVZ. These two players, from what I've seen, have a very distinct style. Quark. Really likes to mix it up. Low APM player, but don't look at that. Doesn't really determine a player's skill. I want not the net and immediate scout. It's gonna be a forge expand from Quark. Waiting to see if Baki goes for pool. Interesting scouting pattern from Quark. He's hunting for that overlord. He's just not at the nine o'clock spawn. So from that he can, actually I don't know what this means. Okay, so he rules out Bakuryu spawning top right. And he goes immediately to bottom right. So cute scout from Quark and effective in this scenario. Here he sees the drone over pull, hatchery timing is around two minutes. This is a media scout. The next drone will be to deny. Uh, the next drone that comes out will be to lay down that hatchery. And here it is. Seems like the volume's a little bit low. There we go. Two drones from Baku. Very big investment. He has one drone less on minerals mining and another drone on the map scouting. Quark really should go for Nexus first, it being cross positions. Even if Bakuyu goes for those six slings, he just has plenty of time. So long as he cancels that pylon. And there it is, there's the cancel, there's the Nexus. You should see a pylon or a cannon shortly after. He sees the links pop out. Normally you want that cannon started right before the links pop out, but cross map gives him an extra few seconds to do that. Pretty fast gas from Bakuyu. And the drone scout getting that scouting information. Very annoying for Zerg to take this. It makes the uh, drone transfers less effective just because they take several seconds longer to start mining. And here's Bakuryu's third hatch at his natural. see now he's gonna be actually short on minerals I think his gas was just a little bit too fast we going pylon gateway assimilator all very standard and there's a layer from blocker you Second probe heading out on the map with this one already in the red. Looks like Quark is going to retreat with this one. And I'm pretty sure this is mineral walking, so even though Link block out the ramp, wouldn't be able to stop it. Core from Quark. Core and Lair at around the same time. Very standard. Let's see how many probes Quark has left in the main. It's like one, two, two few. You really want nine, and then you start rattling everything to your net till everything's saturated. But not a big deal. Circling speed from Bakuyu. Everything, everything, cookie cutter, standard. And there's a Stargate. One Overlord going into the main and Bakuyu leaving, or looks like he was leaving a Ling at the front. 
Gotta see when Zealots start moving on. And looks like Quark is actually playing extremely greedy. Fast second gas. No Zealots at all. And he's immediately going for a Dragoon to kill off that Overlord. So he really wants to mask his strategy. He doesn't want to reveal anything. But this is already unorthodox. This Citadel timing is pretty fast. And going Dragoon first without any Zealots whatsoever. He's really cutting corners here. Oh, one drone not mining. And there's that second gateway, also pretty fast. Walker's well, gonna see this, of course. But, all in all, this looks pretty normal, except for this fast Citadel timing. No plus one air, and there's that archive, so really fast archives from Quark. From what I've seen, Quark likes to mix in this really fast DT timing with Corsairs. And you can see he's cutting probes to do this. He's not making any more probes, getting up that second and third gateway really fast. Walker you behind this, going for standard. Three hatch fire, five hatch hydra. Supply blocked here, very annoying, can't make scourge. There's a evolution chamber and the Hydra Den. Very nice SimCity at the natural. <clears throat> this position is a little bit awkward to SimCity. This could also be an evolution chamber. And it would effectively block as well. But Zealots can't actually fit through neither of these. They would have to go through the gas, through the mineral line. Another Overlord goes down. So that's two Overlord losses. But here come the Corsairs. Or I should say the Scourge. Looks like one Corsair went down at third and another went down at the net. So this is already pretty bad for Quark. He wants to do this timing where he gets really fast DTs with some Ser support as well. Bakuyu is actually not going to have much in the way of units. With the DT opener at around 7 minutes, there's a DT at your bases. But this is so many more DTs. You see Quark is just making DTs, rallying them across the map. Now he's resuming pro production. First UT heading to that. There's already some defense and a very nice wall. Mark, you're not playing greedy, not over droning. Here comes another goon, Sayer. This is another overlord that's gonna go down. But the real threat here are these DTs. Imagine this position if there were three Corsairs in the air, not just one. This is already doing a ton of damage. Lots of Hydras going down. Blinks, drones now being targeted by these DTs. Baku completely caught off guard by this kind of attack. This is four DTs and there's no detection at all. It's like one Overlord just barely pops out. In time, DTs are in the red. What is Parker doing? He's not targeting. Overlord speed finishes. But the DTs are going to town. This is more DTs coming. What is this? Even more DTs being made. It's like the hatchery, if targeted, goes down. Yep, those still go down. Still one Overlord alive. DT still alive. There we go. Overlord goes down, and now, again, we're in a position where the DTs are alive. They're tagging the buildings. There's no detection. Already a very bad position for Barku. But this is a very, very heavy investment from Protoss. He has killed the hatchery already, and about five drones. You can kill the second hatchery, and then there will be no mining at all at this base. Dark Archon being made. And we're finally transitioning into speed lots with High Templar. So that was about 70 T's. Baku, you're mining on the left side of this base. You can probably mine four or five patches just fine. Making some scourge. Here comes a Hydra counter pressure. Another Overlord might be killed. We do have some scourge out on the map. Not that many Hydras since Bakuyu is droning up here, but he has to be careful not to over drone in this scenario. What he really needs is that fifth hatch to be made. I'm 
you can see how invested Quark was in that opener. He's only now just getting plus one. Near Robo as well, getting Maelstrom and getting Dragoon range. There's that fifth hatch finally from Barker, and we have a Muta out on the map. Are we seeing a Muta transition? Yep, we are seeing a Muta transition. So with all the Corsairs uh, going down, we do see the Muta transition, but Quark is already ready for that. We still have the two Corsairs. We have a Dark Archon out on the map. Maelstrom's almost ready, and it already has 100 energy. Hydra's with plus one, no plus two on the way quite yet. Range just started now. Bakuyu has really been hurt by that opening. Very, very clever build from Quark. Catches a lot of Zerg players off guard. Not the kind of build that's reliable. You see it once, you know how to respond, but it can really catch unsuspecting Zergs off guard. We have Quark moving out. Uses a Maelstrom now. I don't know about this. Only gets three Hydras and an Overlord and reveals the Dark Archon. So now Bargu's gonna be running around with his Mutalisk. He's actually countering in the main. There's nothing here. No anti air at all. A couple Dragoons pop out, but there's no cannons. No Corsairs. Corsairs in the middle of the map. The Dark Archon way out of position. Can't defend. And starting to lose a ton of probes. Bargu preparing for the counter attack. If he goes to the third, Bargu's very well defended. If he goes to the natural, he'll be in big trouble. It looks like Quark, unfortunately for him, is gonna go into the third. It's being fortified now. There's a ton of Hydras. Not that much Storm. Actually, never mind. It's High Templars haven't used any Storm at all. Just been gathering energy. Nice Storm there. These Hydras are very clumped up. And a bit of a whiff on that second Storm. He still has a lot more in the bank. Mutas are coming back. Unfortunately, where did the Dark Archon go? It looks like the Dark Archon retreated. It doesn't have enough energy anyway. And all the High Templars have gone down. It's only a few Dragoons. This Archon is about to finish. Bakuyu targeting it with these Hydras. And Bakuyu is actually able to defend. He did lose a ton of drones. You can see he only has two left at this base. And there's plus two. Another hatchery goes down for Bakuyu. So now Quark, he actually didn't manage to set up any anti-air defense. You see his mineral lines are very exposed. He does have the Archon. Dark Archon back with the Hunter energy. We could see another Maelstrom. So be careful. These Dragoons won't let the Dark Archon come in. And he's losing more and more probes. Still only four hatcheries. But four hatchery. Still a ton of production for Zerg. Ideally, you want more five or six at this point, at least six to be honest. But with these mutants counterattacking, they're doing a ton of economic damage to Quark. And here we go. There's the Maelstrom. The mutants are clumped up. There's only two Corsairs. There is in Storm. And the Maelstrom runs out, and the mutants are able to escape, but only six, much less threatening than the 11. And what? Does Quark have in the way of splash damage now? He doesn't have any Dragoons. I mean, High Templar, he only has Dragoons and Zealots. It's a lot of Hydras from Bakuyu. Bakuyu didn't join up. He's staying on that on four hatch production. Trying to find a window here where he can do some damage to Quark. See the Mutas countering again. Quark frustrated with his unit AI and killing one of his front gateways. Uh, this is fine to be honest because he's not going to have the economy to support that anytime soon. He's just finally being dealt with. And here comes Quark moving out. There's a ton of Hydras, but I think we have enough, enough Dragoons. Nope, looks like more Hydras show up for Barku. See, he hasn't droned up at all. And I don't think he needs to, to be honest. He did enough economic damage to Quark that. He has a window here. I just have plus two as well. Very powerful. Quark critically, no high Templars from him. Only two being made now. He's trying to utilize the bridge. He has one storm. One storm and soon one maelstrom. 
and we see Baku finally adding some drones. Very threatening Hydra mass here. Storm, only way to deal with this. Problem for Quark is he's never going to have, or he's not going to have the probes to take that third base, so he really has to just keep making probes, keep making units, and hope he can win with an attack. Nice storm there from Quark. Tons of high Templars on the back. Very nice storm here on the retreating Hydra mass. He still has the Maelstrom. Maelstrom and Storm are very good combination. Plus two finishing for him as well. So Barky is actually getting lurkers and plus one air care base. Hydra's in the back. Oh, very nice though. Uh, Millstrom from Park. Unfortunately, loses one high Templar still. But look how many high Templars you, he has. This happens when Protoss has a very weak economy. They have very low mineral income, but they still have the gas. So you see a lot of more, a lot of high Templar. In the army composition, nice angle to come in from Barku. He's sniping off the high Templars, not committing a lot of Hydras, and then he brings most of his Hydras in the back. Still some good storms from Quark, but you can see his army is tiny. It's mostly high Templar based. And now Barku is gonna be forced to run away. You can see he still has more Hydras in the back. Finally mixing in some lurkers. Still only on the four hatcheries. No observers here with this army. Are there any in production for Quark? Looks like no, he's just busy retreating, trying to save this very small army. It's very hard for him to rebuild with such low pro count. Fifth hatch finally being added for Baku. And there goes down the army of Quark. What does he have in the back? He still has some units. You can see he can barely afford to produce. Baku's scouting, there's no third base. And with the Dark Harkon gone now, well, actually this is a ton of Lurkers. I'm surprised he's making this many Lurkers. I really thought he would transition back into Mutas, but this is 11 Lurkers in production. Quark making that third Nexus, immediately scouted by Bakryu. And it's going to be tough for Bakryu to, uh, to, for Quark to hold these positions. This bridge and this ramp at the third is in his favor. Finding Spirit is a very good map for PvZ simply because you can take this third base and defend it easily. But you can see Barker setting up a Lurker contain, and it's going to be hard for Barker to, for Quark to contest this position. It's being cut off from defending his third. Observer only now being made. Not that many units heading towards his third. If you can get some cannons up, he might be able to defend. Doesn't have any storms left. There's actually an Observer here. One Lurker. Hitting the cannons. Nice spread of lurkers from Bakuyu. And now he's reinforcing this with hydras. Just pure hydras behind this. Gonna take Quark a lot of time to clear this lurker field. So you can see Bakuyu uh, using this time to just counter the third. All the units go down. The High Templar doesn't have any more storm left. Next is cancelled and Quark types GG. Very hectic game. And with that, Germany takes the first point. And nice game. We're gonna go into another PVZ, this time between Remag and Eonzerg. Is Neil Silfid. 
in the top spawn we have Remag as the teal Protoss representing team Germany and in the bottom right we have Eon Zerg as the white Zerg. Alright, let's change the score. First point went to team Germany. This map I think is actually pretty tough for PvZ. Very open map. Tons of bases for Zerg to take. And any map where there are mineral onlys always seem to favor the Zerg. Overlord being scouted by the probe. Remag already knows where Eon Zerg is. Doesn't have to. I see on a three player map, you usually don't dedicate that second scout, but. On Sylphid, because you know where the Overlord is coming from, you can check that path. And if he gets here and doesn't see it, you can just head towards the other base. Oh, sorry. Overpool from Eon Zerg. And there's a forge from Remake. Delayed Forge, perfectly fine. He'll be able to go 13 Nexus Cannon in this position. Reason why the Zergs go for that Overpool is because they get the perfect link uh, timing so that if Protoss wants to go Nexus first, they actually have to probe cut. You can see Remang is not probe cutting here, so he's not going to be able to go for Nexus first. He's blocking. So, a little bit of a trade off here. You annoy the Zerg, but you also hurt your own economy slightly. He's gonna be forced to go cannon first, but this is still perfectly fine. You see Eon Zerg making only two links. There's the pylon cancel, and Eon Zerg just took his third first. Very delayed Nexus from Remake. Never stop pro production. But this actually hurts him quite a bit. You really want this Nexus up faster. Faster than these two extra probes. These two extra probes will hurt your tech timing. You can see he's going pylon before gateway. Probe is still alive, but Eon Zerg is hunting him down. Already got him into the shield. And only 9 HP left. You see, very intent. Lots of APM being focused into this. There's a key probe scout. The sooner this goes down, the faster Eonzer can change up his build if he wanted to go for 3 Hatch Hydra. Ideally, you kill that probe first. Another pylon for Remag, and I don't understand this pylon. The Nexus is going to give him supply, so it's a pretty fast third pylon in PvZ. There's the lair from Eonzer, but he still wants to keep this probe alive. This lair can be cancelled. Hydrogen can still be made after lair. Oh, and the probe almost goes down there. Looks like Yonzer can two hits away, one hit away. Yonzer droning up his third. Still only on the two lanes. Before, it's much uh, much easier to kill this probe, but it's one less drone. And here we go. One hit away. Probe does go down, but we can see Yonzer getting link speed, just playing standard. There's a cybernetic score from... Remember, this is actually a pretty late Cyber Knights. Again, Remag's opening build was kind of all over the place. He didn't cut probes to get that Nexus up, and then he made a pylon before Gateway. You can see the Spire going down before the Stargate. Not at all normal. First Zalat out on the map, but Eons are scouted this. It's prepared already. Looks like Remag was just trying to sacrifice that sell it to get the probe in the main, but not able to accomplish that either. He wants to get in this position right behind the mineral line, but Eon Zerg, very experienced player, has probably faced this, I don't know, maybe a hundred times on this map. 
and that Zella goes down without killing anything. And only eight healings from Eonzerg made. Second cannon, as his wall is now vulnerable. Stargate and Citadel. Second gas a little bit late. Fourth hatch from Eonzerg. And then another is that like getting picked off. This one only killing one Ling. You might getting plus one air, a cannon to protect the Stargate. The under expires about done. And there's a fifth hatch and the Hydra Den. You should see that evolution chamber shortly after. Second gas and even more drones from Eonzerg. He's gotten two zealots for free basically, so he's in a very comfortable position. You can see him somewhat hiding the overlords. Usually do this so you don't lose any uh, overlords. Scourge just aren't in time unless you hide them like this, but because he had a pretty delayed target with respect to the spire timing, look how easily Eon is able to deflect the first Corsair. There's the evolution chamber. Hydra Speed is on the way. First Hydra is in production. And the archives from Remake. This archive timing is a little bit risky. He's got to be careful here. Eon gaining that full scouting information on. He sees the archives timing. And let's see if he's able to punish this. No plus one quite yet for these Hydras. Overlord speed is on the way. And you can see the drone count at the third is already at 10. You have 8 at the natural and 9 in the main. This is very healthy for Zerg. Eon's gonna afford that 6 hatchery pretty fast, and here comes that drone to make it. He's forgotten this plus one, which is pretty important. Still scouting with the Scourge. This is four Corsairs, five on the way, plus one almost done, and <clears throat> he made these extra gateways before the archives, so he does have a large number of zealots, but this timing is quite late. It's about 30 seconds late by the time he gets to Eon's Zerg's base, Eon will actually just fight this in the middle of the map. He has enough Hydras, so he has some Lings left over. And we see Remag is actually being forced to retreat, and he actually might die here. No overlords with this army. So this DT might save him, but you see it's four gateways only and there's no archives, uh, no high templars that have been made. Yon can just counter here. This D DT will save him and here comes a Corsair counter. And Yon's very, doesn't have any Hydras, only one Hydra with this fleet of Overlords. Looks like the front has been broken, but he still has DT, the DTs alive and with no way to detect. Yon's very also occupied with these Corsairs. I think Aeon's gonna be forced to retreat. You see, Remag still doesn't have any High Templars. And if Young Zerg just keeps making Hydras, eventually he will have an Overlord at the front, and Cannons, Zealots, and DTs won't be enough. Another Overlord here for the picking, if Remag notices it. And there was the DT counter, but again, look how many Hydras Eonzer has, and we don't have any splash on the map. Still adding cannons. Don't want to add cannons. You really want gateways to be up. Only four gateways currently. Korosh could easily be at six or eight. Corsairs again doing their job. As long as he can keep countering with the Corsairs. Unfortunately, one Overlord is coming with this Hydra group, and there's no DTs now. No DTs and no High Templars, and it's just too many Hydras. Eonzer, even without plus one. Just easily gonna break. One DT is coming in here. It goes down, only takes out one Hydra. Now it's only cannons, probes, and zealots. And while Eonzerg is actually supply blocked, he has plenty of Hydras, enough to kill the front. And no GG. And that's a point for the European team, so we'll be at 1 1.
really needed those high templars there. We're gonna go into the next set. To CVRT or CRVT against Cryoc. Yeah, CRVT against Cryoc. PVT. <clears throat> and the map will be Optimizer. Hola. And in the top left, we have Red Kryak representing Team Germany. And in the bottom right, we have CRVT Red representing Team Europe. That's the Protoss. Map is Optimizer. You have these double gas in the main. I guess the most unique thing of this map is the double gas, but also this hidden, or I should say back base, that's only accessible once these natural minerals are mined out. Only 250 per patch. Cross map, I guess it's not that, uh, it doesn't affect the matchup as much. If there were horrors or vertical spawns, then it would. Get another avenue to attack your opponent. Hello, hello. Did ASL end? Nice Sim City from Cryoc. Barracks, command center, and people like this make it so the zealots can't fit through these gaps. From. From me, from where? I probably shouldn't spoil ASL. I was watching it. It was flashes, random. Gateway and gas from CRVT. Both players taking the gas that's on top because it has 4,000 as opposed to the 1,000 gas at the bottom. CRVT delaying a scout, very normal in PVT. Where are you going? Marine beam made from Cryoc. And there's a factory, come on, there's a factory. And I like where he's positioning it. You want it close to your Sim City in case zealots do come. CRVT actually going for range first, even for Dragoon, and he's already pulled off gas. A little bit curious, this is quite a uh, risk, but turns don't often go for fast attacks, they just prioritize getting that command center up. Are we even gonna see a Dragoon be made? Looks like nope, just immediately Nexus first. Before any Dragoons, just getting that fast range. And there's that Nexus from CRVT. Alright, does see he's making a bunker. Gonna set up his own natural. Only one SCV on gas. Both players going for macro openings. Oh, going back to the UK. Three months are up. GG. So, curious build from CRVT, but... I like it, you get that Nexus up pretty fast, and you still have your Dragoon range timing unharassed. Hello Caster Muse, there's that first Dragoon coming out finally, Cryak hiding his SCV on the left side of the map, he wants to rescout, see what follows up this Nexus. Pretty soon I will also have to go back, unfortunately. There goes out that SCV. He's gonna go back. Wants to really scout. 
wants to get in and see the robo timing if there's a citadel, how many gateways are up. Whoa, wrong button. Now, this is a really fast nexus. CRVT is transferring probes. He's leaving one per patch in the main. Natural actually has 10 patches with these additional four. And Krak's trying to get in. Dragoon not blocking. He's gonna get in. He's gonna see there's only one gateway. Gonna see roll time. Second gateway being added. Nothing too revealing yet. If he does see that third gateway, he can count out reavers. But CRVT could also make it and cancel it. And in Krak's base, we have a normal follow up. We have a couple of tanks. Vulture being added. Getting mines. And he's actually moving out. Because it's cross map, I don't think this will accomplish much, but he can put on some pressure. CRVT's opening. Had him cutting goons at several moments. Wall being made by CRVT and a shield battery. Now he won't need this shield battery. This isn't this is only one factory. Look how late the second factory is. He's only going to put on a little bit of pressure and I think he'll just be forced to retreat. He can pick off this wall if he's very patient. I don't know about moving in. Oh, look, he's just targeting the pylons. Unfortunately, the vulture gets sniped. Only lays down one mine. Cryx control there. Uh, a little bit curious. He still has some time before that first observer gets out. Once that first observer is out, the attack is basically over. And just to snipe off that shield battery. I guess if he can kill one of these pylons, it'll be a net win, but really shouldn't be expecting to accomplish much with this kind of attack. But he's staying too long. Observer is out. He's not retreating. The tanks are staying at the front. He can lay mines to buy these tanks some time, but he really has to go now. Should sacrifice these marines as well. Really important not to lose any tanks. This is three gateway production. And based on the goon count, I think Cryak knows that. He should be able to count, count out reavers. He does have the eBay already, but you saw the Dragoon, Dragoon count. He really shouldn't make any turrets. Zero turrets are required here. He knows it's not rear, at least initially. And looks like CRBT is going to take one of these uh, Nexuses in the back. How did he get this Pro War? I guess he just glitched it. He's already getting a second gas. The reason why you get that second gas at the natural is the natural has 5,000 gas. This, this gas here only has 1,000. He could trick this. I, can you do this? Can you lay a mine right there and trick it through? I've never seen it done. I'm sure it's possible, but the amount of APM it would require. Two add-ons from Cryok. He's going to need a lot of tanks to be produced. He didn't lose any of his uh, initial tanks, which is important. All in all, I think uh, CRBT is in a comfortable position. He's adding that shuttle, but this is only for Zealots. This is kind of like, well, that's actually, why does he have so many zealots? Double forge going down. Usually you get one shuttle and you add four zealots and it'll allow you to zealot bomb, break pushes easier. Just get general damage done. Really only want dragoons until zealots have speed and zealot speed isn't a priority in PvT. There we have the minerals being mined for crack, so he's also going to have access to this base. But you see, on terrain, it's actually pretty awkward to get there. You just have to take a roundabout path. Here we have CRVT taking this base. No drop play from crack. Drop is actually very common on this map. And he's actually going to take not the middle base. He's going to take one of the exterior bases. Crack already saturating his third base. He's getting plus one armor and weapons. Citadel done and he's getting an archive so no fast arbiter from him just gonna stay on gateway units can also be effective but on this map where uh, air is actually pretty strong I'm surprised he's not going for any kind of air unit no arbiter no carrier just straight ground army Crocs third and fourth gateway is finally done so you can start adding some vultures Getting vulture speed so he can have some presence out on the map. You can see he has very limited map vision. He has scans. 
against this kind of style, there's really no pressure on Cryok to attack. He can just really wait for 2-1 and expand slowly on this map. You'll have access to this pretty hard to defend third base, but the fourth base is right next to it, and eventually you could take this base as well. Cryok is gonna need a lot of tanks to defend this third base. Commands are done. I'm wondering how CRVT is planning to attack if Cryok ever takes this base. He only has the one shuttle. Does have four zots, one mine. There's two dragoons. Nice scan to snipe off the other observer, and here we have Cryok setting up. Spreading out his tanks nicely. He has the Goliaths, the anti shuttle unit. Will he make uh, Zella bombs a lot less reliable if there's Goliaths out on the map? And CRVT taking another gas. He's gonna start mixing in high Templars. You see, he's getting Storm. If you're really gonna skip Arbiters and Carriers, you need some kind of method to deal with the. Th oh, he's going in for the Zealots. He's going for the Zealot Bomb. Trying to find a good angle where the Goliaths can't just target it down. Croc is well aware. You can see him moving his Goliaths and Marines. What I was saying earlier is if Perlas elects to not go for any Stargate tech, they still need some way to fight the Terran head on. And the only way to do that, other than with good upgrades which help, but aren't usually the decider, is to get High Templars with Storm. And there's the shard shuttle being targeted. Four Zolts able to run away. They might eat this mine. And CRBT with a fourth base set up. Leaving some Dragoons and Cannons here. This is good against Vultures. Can also wall. Drops are very good on this map. Still surprised. Cryok hasn't gone for any. You can see you could drop here, here. Dragoons will be able to range tanks, but with the high ground mischance, drops are very, very effective. Weapons 2 starred for Cryok. Still no armor quite yet. Actually, this is already. Yeah, he has the two armies ready, but he's not upgrading them. And he's taking another gas. All these middle base gases only have 3,000. Cryok actually already took the another gas in his main. So he's been on three gas. He's going to be on four gas soon. But as soon as he gets this one set up, the one in his main will run out. CRVT has a large army advantage, and these tanks are unprotected. There's no vultures, no mines in the way. Zelts are going to be able to get right up on top of these tanks. Vultures are coming in just a little bit too late. Not that many Dragoons from CRVT. You can see it's only 7 8 Dragoons, and it's mostly Zelts. But the Zelts do allow uh, the Perlas to engage a large number of tanks. You see, most of the tanks have gone down. And even though I think Croc is just barely going to hold, this is actually a very good trade for him able to trade Zealot for tanks. He does have more production than Terran. He actually has a small upgrade advantage here. Let's see. Still more Zealots being made. I think it was CRVT against Koget where I saw a similar kind of attack. It was only about one control group of Dragoons and the rest Zealots and the Zealots were just able to get right up on the tanks and then trade efficiently. Nice Zealot drop just to de delay this fourth base from Cryok. Cryok's in. gonna have a tough time trying to take that fourth base now that he lost all his tanks. Nice high Templars here at the natural. Very good storms. Cleaning up that middle line. So, really just maneuvers to slow down the Terran as CRVT takes more of the map. He already has 2 2 on the way. Not a ton of gateways, not like you normally see, but because he's been able to trade, yeah, he hasn't maxed out and started floating that bank. You know, that's usually when you see the a ton of gateways being added. But if Protoss can't keep his army supply below 200 while he trades efficiently, he's, you can stay on this low gateway count. Something died there, I don't know what. Maybe the barracks. We have EMP beam research, but the EMP is only going to be utilized against 
shuttles with, oh, I mean high templars, but if the high templars in the shuttle, all of a sudden you can't EMP them. Here we have TRVT coming in. He actually led with the dragoons, not the best choice. But it looks like he just has too many uh, zealots. He's storming the tanks. Very effective storm. There was a D-matrix there, but all the tanks have been wiped out yet again. There's only two tanks here. I think there's four tanks at his third. But just too many ground units for CRVT. So it's getting right on top of the tanks again. And Krak's in a tough position here. He has no units left. He's only relying on his factory rally and reinforcements. Another storm on the mineral line. He's having a tough time holding on. I see he's trying to run, trying to escape, but you see the command center exposed, being targeted down. Only four dragoons, but these are very upgraded dragoons. 2-2 two, two on the ground army. Terran is on 2-1. CRVT getting shuttle speed. 3-3. Three, three. Krog finally manages to hold, and the command center hasn't been killed, but it's burning down. Only on 66 HP. Alright, does have this final, uh, this fourth base finally set up. Command center, did it burn down? Looks like it's about to burn down. Krog hasn't noticed he's occupied, trying to establish this position outside of his ramp, outside of his choke. And looks like the pressure doesn't let up for CRVT. You can see he's reinforcing. Some units get stuck here, but he has a lot of games, a lot of production. Has five nexuses up. And crack taps GG. Not that much left in the way of units for Cryoc. And with that, CRVT gives a second point to Team Germany. Uh, Team Europe. We're going to go into the 2v2. The 2v2 had some substitutions. Initially, it was Fisheye and Darkstorm against uh, CRVT and Cadenzi. Both teams utilizing their sub. Let's go into that 2v2. And let's see. Looks like we have LML in the top spawn with Fisheye in the bottom left. This is CRVT spawning at 6 o'clock with Ball in the top right, like 2 o'clock spawn. So ZBP against PP. This is actually very, very favored towards the ZP team. Not really sure what they're saying, but basically uh, CRVT has the freedom to do whatever he wants. Alternative, uh, alternatively, you could just go 2-gate and then uh, Ball can do whatever he wants. Looks like Ball going for that gas cancels it. It's gonna be a hatch first, and ten hatch is very good against uh, PP teams. You can get Lings out to defend double gateway just fine. Normally, one of these Protosses will go Tech and Sarah, and the other one will go Zealots. Pylon scout from Fisheye. There's a gateway from CRVT, gateway from LML. And 10 hatch at the ramp from Ball. This is actually a bit curious. You can get that expansion anyway. Even with double, if, even if both products went, went for double gateway, 10 hatch can defend just fine. Especially if CRVT also goes for double gateway. Here we have the scout coming in, and they're going to see the 10 hatch. They should know this 10 hatch. Because 12 hatch would be a hatch we've been made, I don't know, 15 seconds ago. I wouldn't have this much HP. See, they say hatch at ramp. Double gateway here, and we have gateway and tech from LML. CRVT also going double gateway.
No pool from, uh, I mean, no gas from Baw. It's not going to be Speeling. It's not going to be Muta. It's not going to be Fast Muta. Still one base play, which is still curious. Maybe he'll make that third hatch at the natural. Maybe that's his plan. And we have CRVT moving out. Making that second and third Zella. Nice block here. How many probes did it trap? Three probes. Really hurting the economy of Fisheye. A little bit curious as to what LMO is doing. You see he's floating minerals. No Stargate being made. And here comes the first eight Zerglings from Ba. There's Stargate being slightly hidden away from the Overlord. Cherry T is just making more Zealots. He's in Fisheye's main, but he can't really do much. Fisheye also has double gateway. But here comes the eight Zerglings from Ba. And they know LMO can't really reinforce and help out because he's only on the one gateway. He's taking up quickly. Fisheye, no battery. Saying help, help. He has three Zolots against three Zolots, but also eight links. If he utilizes the probes, he can defend. But the Zolots are being cut off. They can't retreat. I'm not being targeted down. Here come the probes. These two Zolots are pretty low on health, and more Zolots coming in from the CRVT. So the pylon just goes down, but <laughs> targeting the pylon actually allowed Fisheye to defend. CRVT coming. There's two Zolots and a probe. Here to defend. There's only one Zealot left for Fisheye and three healthy Zealots from CRVT. CRVT finally getting that gas up and Ball still just massing things. He has enough gas to get speed. Stargate is out. First Corsair about to pop out and Ball is actually not going to be able to do anything against this Corsair. Already losing one Overlord, going to lose a second as soon as that one goes down. But we we'll see they've broken Fisheye's position. There's still enough Zalt here. And with the link support, Fisheye is being forced to pull probes, trying to engage links on the probe, Zalots on Zalots. Again, LML not helping out his ally. This could have been defended with cannons, but again, the key here was that uh, CRVT with that pylon. Distracted Fisheye away from the ramp. He had to keep units attacking it. That first Zealot allowed, was allowed into the main. And as soon as that Zealot was being chased, the ramp was left undefended. See, Fisheye and Ba have very low uh, economies, but Ba can recover much more easily. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to kill any player. And Fisheye is dead. Spore up to protect the Overlords. And I mean, they could just counter or they could just transition. It does, they, they could do anything. Team, you're up here. Nice round by Ball. CRT coming in with five Zalots. Just so many Zealots from CRVT. Only two gateway production, but he still got a ton of Zealots up. Trying to transition into Archives, what? CRDT is a very natural combination, but Zerg has the Overlord to support his ally with detection. And there's the GG, and Team Europe takes another set. So now we're at 3-1, and let's just put on the matchups. Ziki didn't play LML. He actually forgot, so it was a walkover in favor of LML. Team Germany is going to get that point, so it's actually 2-3. And we're going to go into the last match on screen, which is Kavenzi against Rata, Rata Ta Tang. If Rata Ta Tang wins, then we'll have an ace. Otherwise, 
It's the last set. So let's go into the last match. Alright. In the top right, we have the blue Terran Ratatateng representing Team Europe, Germany, whoops. And in the bottom left, we have White Zorg Kunenzi, now representing Team Europe. ZVT map is Eclipse. Ratatateng, I'm not familiar with him, haven't seen him play. Comes out old order heading out to player map so they know where they are. Have to be a little bit careful with this overlord scouts sometimes in CBT if Terran goes through Arax. The pathing you take is very important to protect the overlord. There's a depot from Ratatang, no eight racks. And no pool first from Tedenzi. Overlord being made. Waiting to see what Kenanzi does. It's likely going to be a 12 hatch, but you never know. Can still see some 11 pulls, 12 pulls. Barracks being made by Ratatatang. A little bit curious on this positioning. Reason being, unless this is a mech build, uh, you want your barracks closer towards the ramp, really, like over here. And then if you want to make tech, you hide it here. Reason being is that if mutas are on the map and they're in your main, you're going to start harassing your main and your mineral line. You don't want outlying tech buildings to get sniped and delayed easily. There's a 12 hatch from Cadenzi and the pool immediately made after. Got a mineral boost. Let's just watch it once. How it jumps off the hatchery. Boom. And there's the gas. The 12 hatch. Let him pull 10 gas or whatever. <laughs> Just two hats from Kerenzi Ratatang. A pretty delayed scout, and you don't delay your scouts this much. Reason being is if you scout 12 hatch, you don't need the second supply depot. You don't even need this marine really. You can just go for that immediate command center. And then you'll make your second supply depot at the natural to wall. You can see this is gonna delay his command center a little bit and you really want to cut corners in this game in StarCraft in the early game. Trying to get an advantage where you can and not going for that 15 command center, delaying it a little bit. You have these extra marines, but this does slow down everything else basically. It slows down your gas timing, slows down your second uh, barracks timing. Now, maybe he's not going to go for that uh, 2 racks, but because it's 2 hatch, it's very unlikely we'll see 5, uh, five racks plus 1. So making non-stop marines doesn't really help the Terran. There's the SCV scouting that is two hands lair. Kenzie making four lings. And immediately going out to counter with them. Warlord at the natural getting that full scouting information. You can see the path Kenzie took. There's that second warlord. Very nicely placed. And we have Brada Tatang doing a move out. But just moving on a little bit. It's four marines against four zerglings. Five marines now. Easily will be able to defend. And there's that second barracks from Ratatang. Supply blocked here. Very painful supply block actually. Depot just finishes. There's a transfer towards that. Spire about done. No Dan in sight, so it's gonna be two hatch lair. We have more more links being made by Kenenzi. There's a bunker going down. Speed is about done, and there's this fire going down into natural. And look at the Zerg economy after all those links have been made. That's the wait for speed to finish. It's going to be eight links with four more on the way. And actually, even more links being made. And, I, and that supply block by Ratatatang is actually going to hurt him a lot. Also, no depot here to wall. So. He has been exposed to this kind of play, and Kedenzi, with that scouting information, 
knows this. SCV's still alive and he did scout more links, but he's not prepared at all. Looks like one SCV is coming out and it's gonna make a depot, I think. Nope, just going out to scout. Sees a ton of links. Let's see his reaction timing. Things are gonna go and surround that bunker immediately. SCV's not repairing really, trying to block the ramp. It's like not a ton of damage by Kenenzi. Did kill off several marines, but you really want to get more damage done with this kind of investment in the Zerg wings. Let's look at the economy. We have 10 drones on minerals and 6 on gas. This does allow Zerg to produce non-stop mutas, but this is basically as all-in as it gets. Very hard to transition out of this as Zerg. And there are the first mutas being made. 6 mutas right off the bat. And plus 1 being researched. So this is going to be Death by Muta or Terran wins because Zerg cannot transition out of this. There we finally have a depot being made as part of the wall. There's the first scanner being added, third barracks and the factory. Very fast factory and I'm not really sure if Terran can afford all this. Fourth barracks. First turrets being added but no turrets at the natural yet and you really want to add turrets at the natural first can get here faster because then he sees this only the first turn being added now Terran is vulnerable now to muta harassment here we go turret is not going to be up in time there are some marines and medics stim is stim done stim is done but no range and that turret first turret gets targeted and it's like one muta does trade its life for one marine and one turret another marine goes down looks like the bunker is unloading needs those extra marines. Kenenzi just rallying everything to the front. This 16 drone number, you're going to see it's going to stay there. But Terran's SCV count and unit count will start to go down as the mutil mutilist number grows. We have some nicely placed turrets in the main. When protecting the barracks as well. But Kenenzi just runs by, finds a weakening. So there's just uh, an opening here. It's very, very risky to do this. Such a low mutilus number. Only marines here, no medics. You can see the mutilus against no medics. Just fight the marines straight up. Ratatang adding turrets. Wants to make it hard for these mutilus to run away. Kedenzi just microing here in the corner. Another SCV goes down. Natural much better defend in this, mo in this moment. Five mutilists left. Four mutilists. More being rallied out the front, but there's no way for Kenenzi to combine. Maybe retreat is the best option here. Oh. Turret shooting the mutas, and I think all these mutas will go down. Only one escapes. But that was still a ton of damage done. We have the starport up already. Is Ratatatan gonna go into armory? Armory probably the best bet here. Vessel takes too long. We have Kenenzi counting that. There's one fire bat, but it's not in the bunker. Bunker does go down, but not that many units. I still don't see any follow-up tech from another tank. Armory would be the response here. If he's where if he's utilizing his scans to see what Kenenzi has. Scan the natural and you see one drone. Really should make that armory, and no, it's gonna be a science facility, which is still good, but it's just gonna take a lot longer. And until that vessel is out, he's still gonna be quite weak. We had a scan going down, don't know where it went, but he's moving out. He's moving out against a Zerg that's committed to Mutalisk. This is very risky. And I think with that move out, that tank just gave away the game. Some more scans going down. Plus one for the mutas is done. Marines also have plus one. And now we have links supporting the mutas. And while it's not that many links, there aren't that many marines. There's mostly only turrets. Wings able to kill some of the turrets. Karen panic panicking in this moment. Natural is completely exposed here against links. See very few marines. We do have four backs production, but every engagement has gone in Zerg's favor. And now the mutas are able to two shot these turrets. There aren't that many marines left. Trying to repair. Only one turret left at the natural. 
So if you have three volleys from the mutas, even with repair. Now the natural is completely exposed. More mutas being rallied across the map. One of the damaged mutas is being grouped now, but the completely broken natural. This is a hopeless position for Terran. Only way to get back into this is with tech. Tons of scans just went off at every base, seeing the Zerg doesn't have a third base. But really, you only need to scan the natural. You scan the natural and you confirm there's nothing there. And because Kanenzi, after breaking the natural, was already transitioning all drones off gas. Range wasn't even done for Terran. And with that, Team Europe wins 4 2. Si te gustó este video, no olvides darle like. Y si aún eres nuevo y aún no te suscribes, te invitamos a hacerlo y a darle clic a la campanita. Recuerda que todos los días viernes estaremos subiendo nuevas guías y nuevo material, todo en relación con StarCraft remasterizado. ¡Hasta la próxima, amigos!